All right, so hello everybody. Uh, my name is Magda Zabielska and uh, I'm from the Faculty of English at Adam Mickiewicz University uh, in Poznań. And um, today I would like to uh, uh, present, um, to give a talk uh, entitled, It gave the impression that I wasn't welcome, foreigners disempowering experiences with healthcare institutions in Poznań. So basically in this talk, I would like to focus on some preliminary results uh, from the research, which uh, I have been conducting for over a year now. And um, this research uh, was funded by the National Science Center. So let me first uh, talk you uh, All right, let me just uh, uh, talk you through uh, the outline of my presentation. So after a brief introduction to the um, study background, my study background, I will say a few words about my subjects and methods. And then I will focus specifically on um, a foreigners' experiences, um, which, um, um, it, um, uh, which will be based on the discussion of uh, some um, chosen selected excerpts from the interviews which I conducted with them. And in these uh, interviews, they focus on um, problems that they identify uh, when it comes to uh, the functioning of the healthcare institutions in Poznan, uh, what kind of coping strategies they resort to if they encounter problems, their personal take on the events reported, Mm, as well as um, uh, suggestions for improvement that uh, they, they offered, right? They, they had a chance to offer. And of course, we will finish with uh, some conclusions, some concluding remarks. All right, so <clears throat> uh, let's start with the background uh, uh, of my study. So this study has to be discussed in the context of major population movements and their consequences for the well-being of communities in contact, both in Europe and beyond. However, contextualizing this particular research, over the last couple of years, the city of Poznan has attracted a, la a large number of foreign visitors, many of whom decided to stay here permanently. So we've got international students exchange um, at universities, we've got migrant workers from many countries, and we have American soldiers. Uh, according to Katarzyna Podowska, who cites uh, some statistical data of the city, even every 13th person in Poznan can be a foreigner. This means that these people can be potentially in need of medical advice, medical help, and consequently in need of an interpreter translator. Um, this means not only uh, assistance in direct doctor and patient communication, but also, for example, in obtaining patients' consent for surgery. However, the trouble is that regardless of the increasingly greater number of foreigners uh, coming to Poland, healthcare institutions do not get any funds to cover the cost of interpreting translating services. In contrast, for, uh, for instance, um, uh, to the UK or the US, which, where this is actually a common practice. However, um, what we are talking about is a very special, I would say, very sensitive context. So we are actually not talking about foreigners uh, going to a shop and wanting to buy something and they find it difficult to express themselves, they find it difficult to actually do that. But we are talking about uh, very specific, very delicate, very sensitive situations in which uh, they, um, they may be in a very bad condition and they need medical help, they seek medical help. But uh, upon, pre upon presenting to a hospital, uh, to a healthcare institutions, they cannot get their message across because they can't speak Polish. They, they don't speak Polish, right? And uh, there is no response from uh, uh, the, other, the other side, right? So these situations are, are really different, right? You, you may not, if, um, if you don't buy something, probably, you, you, may, you may live, you, you may survive, right? But when you come with a healthcare problem, uh, the situation is uh, different, right? So in this context, uh, successful doctor and patient communication um, plays a vital role in the therapeutic process at many different uh, levels. And all the patients, regardless of their cultural um, uh, background, have the right to receive information in a comprehensible way using various means supporting communication, and this is guaranteed by the Patients' Rights Act from 2008, right, regardless of their cultural background. So it follows, right, that 
diagnosing uh, the diagnosis of existing problems related to dealing with foreign patients, gathering their experiences, as well as in the long run, proposing particular solutions may contribute to the improvement of these people, these patients, these people's well uh, being. Uh, we find a confirmation of that also in the literature on the topic. According to Kos Goryszewska and Pavlak, healthcare is the domain of immigrants' participation in social life of Poland, about which relatively little is known. Also, uh, you, you find uh, mm, confirmation right, of this situation uh, um, um, uh, in, in a number of uh, interviews that I conducted to, to cite, but one, uh, I wanted to thank for selecting this very sensitive topic for me as a foreigner is one of my biggest uh, concerns and we will see uh, uh, a few more of, of such uh, of such comments when these um, these interviewees these people actually emphasize that it's it, that it, uh, it is a problem right and it needs attention it needs to be um, it needs to be um, heard about it needs to be um, uh, it, it needs to be kind of presented to those people who make decisions about how uh, healthcare institutions, uh, regardless of the place, uh, function in this particular um, uh, context and in this particular uh, respect. Um, and let, let me just give you a small note here. All the um, excerpts from the interviews that I conducted will be presented here in their original uh, form. So uh, maybe just one, one more comment. Um, uh, I was actually... Uh, um, I, 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 uh, I was actually inspired to actually, to, to start uh, to 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 to, uh, uh, to think about this research when uh, when I um, discussed with my friend um, the technicalities of what happens when a foreigner comes to a hospital or an outpatient clinic in Poznan, and uh, he or she uh, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't speak Polish, right? I mean, how these things are organized? What happens when a situation like that arises? Uh, but these are just technicalities. But then I thought. Um, okay, that's one thing, right? But what do these people actually feel when there is a problem, they have a problem, they feel really bad and they cannot get their message across, right? They cannot communicate, they cannot, they are unable to express what's wrong with them, right? Because um, uh, the other person, right, doesn't speak uh, English and they, they can't speak um, uh, Polish. Um, let me now say a few words about the literature on the topic, right? So what has been uh, written so far? Uh, so we've got uh, Agnieszka Minkowska's uh, article, uh, Ziemiec jako pacjent, integracja w sferze poznańskiej opieki zdrowotnej, foreign as a patient, integration in the context of um, uh, healthcare in Poznań, uh, which comes from a publication, an edited collection uh, by uh, Natalia Bloch and, um, and uh, Professor Elżbieta Goździak. Um, so that's one thing. And in this article, she, uh, she talks about uh, the interviews that she conducted with uh, with uh, many foreigners uh, um, living in Poznan, and she also talks about their experiences in the context of um, healthcare. Um, in 2019, uh, Poznan uh, University of Medical Sciences organized the 19th International Congress of Young Medical Scientists, and here we had a presentation entitled The Use of Healthcare Services and Their Assessment by Ukrainian Citizens Staying in Poland. Um, um, and by, by Wojciech Luk and colleagues. So this was um, kind of targeted uh, at a particular, uh, particular um, group. And uh, there is also one more publication still in preparation by uh, our university colleagues, Professor uh, Wojciechowicz Firlej uh, uh, and Szczepania Kozak, as well as Adrian Lankiewicz from the University of Gdańsk. Um, is a global wobec języka lokalnego w komunikacji międzykulturowej, fakty i mity, where they also uh, conducted a number of um, interviews with foreigners from, but from many locations in Poland, and they also asked them about uh, their uh, experiences with the healthcare institutions in uh, in Poland. Um, of note is also the conference that was organized by, again, by um, Poznan um, uh, University of Medical Sciences and the City Hall, Kulturowe uh, Uwarunkowanie uh, Opieki nad Pacjentem, so cultural conditioning of um, 
patient healthcare, um, and it was also an opportunity to, um, uh, to present a, a, a publication, an edited collection, edited by uh, Katarzyna Głodowska, Ewa Baumra, Faustaszewski, and Ewa Murawska under the same title. And uh, this, this conference was focused specifically on dealing with foreign patients in the context of healthcare institutions in, um, in Poznań and in, uh, in general. Okay, so now moving on to my uh, uh, to my study. So um, in my study, I conducted 40 interviews with people of various nationalities, British, Belgian, Hindu, Nigerian, Turkish, Spanish, Brazilian, Iranian, etc. And the only condition was that uh, they had to they had to have some experiences with um, the healthcare institutions in Poznan and their Polish had to be weak. Or, uh, or non-existent, right, as, as they actually um, uh, refer to it um, on many occasions. Uh, I contacted them uh, through various institutions. So one of the very um, useful uh, channels, in a way, uh, was Polish Cafe, which is um, a school of Polish, but which also organizes meetings uh, for foreigners who want to talk uh, to, uh, to um, to talk uh, to native speakers of Polish. Uh, that's, that's, that's a very uh, uh, positively oriented uh, community. International Poznan, the International Poznan Community, uh, Migrant Information Point, uh, Poznan City Hall. And let me just note uh, that uh, not all the institutions were uh, very willing to um, cooperate with me, uh, but I also scanned uh, the list of our university employees in search of any um, uh, foreign sounding uh, names and uh, on many occasions it, it proved to be um, quite successful. I also contacted the admins of some groups on Facebook where foreigners discuss various issues related to their stay in Poland and whenever I came across somebody who was um, willing to participate, I also ask them for any recommendations for anybody else who would be willing to uh, participate. On many occasions, they actually recommended their uh, friends and, and I was able to conduct uh, more and more interviews. So whenever uh, there was someone who was willing, right, I introduced myself, my workplace and my study aims in general. And this is actually the text that um, I, I sent to them. So I, I wrote to them that I would love to listen about your experience with healthcare institutions in Poznan in detail. If you had to seek medical help, how were you received? Did you have any communication problems? Were interpreting translation services provided? Did you feel you were understood and taken care of? And if they agreed, they also had to sign an informed consent, which actually detailed all the relevant information uh, regarding this, this research, for instance, um, what I would do with, um, uh, with the interviews, with the data that I was about to get. And then if everything kind of, if the response was positive, we arrange meetings via Teams, Zoom, WhatsApp, or later um, in some, um, uh, on some occasions also in person. But in general, the majority of, this in, of these interviews were conducted online. Okay, so what do they tell us? What, these, uh, what do these um, foreigners tell, tell us in general? Well, first of all, they definitely identify the problems that they encounter, uh, how they personally um, felt, saw the whole situation, uh, the, the ones that the, the, the one that they report uh, they reported on, what kind of coping strategies they they resorted to if they encounter any difficulties and suggestions for improvement, right? So at the end of the um, of these interviews, I asked them to, um, I, I told them that if they had um, an opportunity to send some kind of message home, uh, so, so some kind of message to those who make decisions about how, the, how healthcare institutions in Poznan function and are organized in this particular uh, respect, what, what, uh, uh, they would actually um, uh, say what kind of maybe suggestions they, they would offer. Um, so in general, you may say that the experience of the apparent problems about which you, uh, you will hear in a second, uh, which are yet to be solved by these healthcare institutions, provides us with an insight into the way in which these people talk about um, these apparently sensitive issues, which 
concern, their well-being and feeling of safety, right? That's what they are. They are sensitive because it's, it's not about buying something or um, arranging something, but actually um, helping them, right? And, and uh, contributing to their well-being um, in, in general. Okay, so... Um, so what, what problems do they identify? Well, first of all, an information barrier. Um, that's interesting, right? They, they, they don't say that the, the first problem is that, the, the, that doctors do not uh, speak English. They say that in general, they at the beginning of, of their stay or even right now, they have no idea where to go or what to do uh, when they need medical help or in, uh, in case of an emergency. One of my speakers told me that it's an absolute mystery which hospital they should go to. It's an esoteric system. As you may expect, uh, they, also, um, they also talk about um, com various communication barriers, right? But again, they don't, uh, they don't say that uh, the first problem is, is, that, uh, is that it is doctors, right? Uh, it is uh, doctors who do not speak English, but the frontline staff who do not speak English, right? Because this means uh, problems with arranging meetings, right? If you cannot communicate via telephone, for instance, in order to arrange a meeting, right? Um, you cannot actually see your doctor. Uh, and this was actually reported also by Agnieszka Minkowska in her, in her paper. Uh, uh, another speaker, to, uh, another interviewee um, uh, says, I have had many issues when I called various physicists and asked them if the person spoke English, they usually said like swabo and they are hanging up. That's one issue that I still cringe at when somebody just hangs up on me. Can you imagine that? Uh, it's, it's an absolutely appalling behavior. And, and I, I may just I wonder how these people kind of feel whenever such a uh, such a thing happens, but this is this is this this appears to be um, one of the practices, right, of, of the institutions that my speakers actually visited. Uh, you may also hear that the secretaries in hospitals are not very nice people. Um, what uh, what my interviewees uh, frequently hear is that we do not have English speaking doctors. And this leads them to, you know, to the conclusion that the communication in English is awful. One of my speakers uh, says that the UK has uh, as many grumpy and unhelpful staff as in, in, as in Poland, but the difference is that they are grumpy in England, right? So it seems like it can bear some degree of grumpiness, right? Um, and the fact that, that nobody uh, is willing to help you, but at least it's, it's, it's your mother tongue, right? If it's, a, if it's a foreign language, it makes things really uh, difficult. Also, um, in the context of the private sector, doctors' command of English uh, exists only in theory on many occasions, uh, in their professional, uh, in their professional uh, profiles, right? Uh, one of my um, interviewees um, who had uh, some tests done, uh, she said that uh, for the next test, I called um, uh, I called and asked specifically that I need um, uh, I needed someone who speaks English. So I went there and again and again, no English, right? So we sense um, we sense here some 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 level of frustration. And again, uh, no English, right? You, you cannot uh, cannot get a person who speaks English and is able to communicate with you and help you. Um, they also say that forms, various documents, even ticket machines in institutions offer instruction in Polish. Uh, one of my interviewees um, who was actually experienced, who, who experienced being yelled at by a doctor, um, she wanted to make a complaint and she says, I received a survey, but you know, it's all so difficult to complain. It's the same, you know, you have to do it in Polish. When you want to complain, you do not receive help to make a complaint. Another speaker says, this is extremely difficult. Even all the machines, you need to make an appointment. Your number, it is not in English. It is a challenge. Even the forms, you need to ask everybody how to do it. You need to spend time and energy. It should be a little bit easier, right? So um, again, we, we, we sense that it, it, it becomes at some point annoying, right? When you have to ask people over and over again and, and, and you, you don't get any help. Um, these troubles, uh, these, these difficulties, which I have just um, 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 
listed, right, lead to particular consequences. One of them is the fact that these people, um, uh, the, these foreigners may actually avoid consultations, right, unless they are really necessary. Um, one of my uh, interviewees um, um, uh, was supposed to have some some uh, some operation, a um, small one, uh, a minor one, and she said, she says, probably eventually I would have to go to hospital for that. I have been kind of delaying that, right? So um, that, that, that's really disturbing, right, when, you, when there is something that you have to do, but the fact that there are so many things that you have to struggle with in this in this particular context in this particular situation uh, makes you feel reluctant to do that, regardless of the fact that it concerns your health. <clears throat> there was also one person who said uh, that there was a time I, I was very bad in the Corona time, and if I would be in Turkey, I would definitely call, but I didn't call meaning call uh, in order to get um, medical help. Because if I would call, they wouldn't understand me properly. So it would change nothing. So I didn't call, um, which seems like you know, it, this, this person seems to have reconciled herself to the fact that she will not get any help. And um, it's also really just uh, um, disturbing. Um, another consequence is generating costs, right? Uh, if you avoid um, uh, these institutions, you may also uh, resort to the private sector, which uh, in, uh, in many, um, um, in many uh, cases, right, proves to be kind of uh, easier um, um, and, and, and um, uh, many of my interviewees told me that the private sector is something that they resort to if they can't do something, if they, they can't get help in the public sector, but of course, uh, the private sector means additional costs, right? But um, I would say that the most the most troublesome consequences is the feeling of helplessness that these people experience and many dramatic situations. And um, I will now mention a couple of them. So one of one group of these dramatic situations is uh, when fathers decide to um, accompany their partners, their wives during the delivery, and then they um, actually are left somewhere in the corridor, uh, being uh, without you know any um, um, no, knowing uh, knowing nothing basically about what what is going on with the with their wives with their partners with their uh, with their babies. Um, uh, one of my interviewees says uh, when when uh, when my son was born right and he labels this this experience a horror story. He says I'm left there me and my bags, nurses, the nurses weren't very nice at all. Two o'clock in the morning, I was very tired, very stressed out, no idea what was, what was going on. She kind of speaks to me. I have no idea what you are saying to me. She was annoyed. She just assumed I did not speak Polish. I was just sitting there for 40 minutes and another nurse came along to take me outside the room and pointed to a chair. I stayed there for another 40 minutes. It seemed to go on forever. It gave the impression that I wasn't welcome. And he continues, they were so crossed out about, crossed about the fact that you do not understand. You are out of place. We don't want you to be here. Thank you very much. You make our job more difficult, right? So imagine that it's not only the fact that you don't have any information, right? You cannot ask anybody. It's actually the feeling that you are out of place and you are not welcome there, right? Although you are a, a family member and you have the right to know what is, what is going on with your loved ones. Uh, another speaker uh, shared with me uh, um, uh, uh, an experience when um, he um, uh, broke his arm uh, while cycling and he had to seek medical help and um, um, uh, when he saw the doctor who, who was supposed to um, help, um, help him, uh, the doctor immediately started speaking uh, Polish and he says, as if I was disturbing her just before she was ending her shift or something. She only spoke Polish to me, fair enough, but then she was incredibly rude and brutal, okay? Uh, I, I have uh, already mentioned a, a patient, uh, a, a speaker, an interviewee, um, uh, who uh, experienced being yelled at by, by, by a doctor. Uh, so this is what she says. Um, uh, she, she had some tests done, and then it was actually possible for her to 
see the, uh, to, to see a doctor immediately, right, after uh, getting the results. She says, you can wait, we have someone who speaks English, she, she was told. And I got to the doctor's office and I started, good morning, and everything in English. This was the doctor that started to say, uh, to yell, to say that he hated uh, to speak English, that he knew how to speak English, but he hated to do it. And he started to yell and to say, mm, to, to curse in Polish, which I understand in my basic Polish. And he was really, really upset. I stayed at the office. I kind of wanted to go, but in the end I stayed. I thought he can speak English, so he has to get uh, his work done, right? So. We may, we may, we may, we may just imagine how, how, how awful, how terrible it was, how, um, how this person uh, uh, felt, right, in being yelled at by, 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 by the doctor just because she, uh, she, uh, the, I mean, the only language she could use was 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 uh, was, was English. How humiliating that was, right? But still, she, she, she thought, okay, um, I will manage, right, and I will stay. Um, because I, I want these things uh, to be done for me. Uh, another story uh, of, of, of uh, a, another story of a father. Um, when our when our child was in hospital, that was an emergency. Her oxygen levels were quite low, so an emergency team came in and she was taken upstairs. I had to stay downstairs, and that was quite bad because my wife had to go away for surgery, and so I was left completely by myself at midnight, not knowing what was happening to my wife or or wife, my child or wife. I was told to sit in the hallway and wait okay so another similar experience right without any information any um, information at all and one more uh, with another label right we had an horror story uh, a few uh, slides ago um, and again there was like nobody in the hospital speaking English it was a little horrifying for me it was really horrible and at that moment it broke my like good feeling about the po about Polish healthcare and she actually used the word massacre right for for that experience I also had a um, uh, had a uh, interviewee uh, a speaker um, um, uh, was pregnant and her child was actually uh, due shortly uh, after after the interview. So uh, her entire pregnancy was actually managed in the private sector, but uh, at some uh, at some point she had to uh, um, she had to see a diabetologist and. Mm, and she was referred to one of uh, 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 public uh, hospitals in, in Poznan because the doctor believed that would be the place where they would be able to uh, speak English, right? Uh, so that was the assumption. Uh, so she says, um, I was actually really anxious. Yeah, we are here. I'm really anxious to go. And finally, I got an appointment from a friend because calling there and making an appointment in English was a difficult thing. So my friend called them and took an appointment for me, right? So, okay, there was an assumption that they would probably be able to communicate with her in English, but it turned out to be uh, not true, right? And even the very arrangement was a problem and she had to ask somebody else to do that. And then she came there and she spent like a couple of hours going from one place to another, um, um, trying to find the place where she was supposed to, uh, uh, where she was supposed to go and, and, and do some tests or get uh, some, uh, some advice. She says, I asked people then, uh, then was one lady who took me to a student who was speaking English. She took my phone and read it. Again, there was nobody who speaks English. So I had to use Google Translate. I did a lot of back and forth and then I had to wait for another hour. The token number, they also uh, called that in Polish. I was so tired that at the end of that, I had my blood pressure shoot up, right? So again, um, we only, have, it's not only the, Kind of um, um, how, how it affects your 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 uh, uh, your psyche, but also it had some particular physical, in a way, consequences. And then I had a, a speaker uh, who really wanted to share his experiences with me. He was really determined to uh, to tell me um, his um, uh, his stories. Uh, but then um, what was really 
uh, what was really, uh, I mean, the, the entire experience of listening to him uh, of, of the of the interview when he shared his experiences was was really was really difficult because actually I saw uh, when he, when he shared all the all the things with me I saw on his it was visible on his face that the very uh, the very process of um, you know uh, recounting these events uh, uh, reliving all these experiences was was still very painful um, uh, uh, to him so. Uh, he um, he shared uh, two particularly dramatic stories with me. Uh, he um, he says, imagine that moment when I arrive at the medical center. I had a high fever. My body was shivering, and you know, I was in a very uh, devastated situation. My health condition was not good, and at the same time, you have to focus and concentrate how you are going to communicate with these people. It was a very challenging task. How to convey put the message across, find the channel, the proper channel for communication, right? So, so he saw this problem, right? That he felt really terrible. Um, his condition was really bad, but he couldn't focus on that. He couldn't focus on getting medical help because he, was, he wasn't unable to communicate. So he was actually, he was, he was uh, preoccupied with, uh, you know, uh, finding this, 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 as he says, proper channel for communication. He also uh, shared another story with, um, uh, with me when he accompanied his wife. A few months ago at four o'clock in the morning, she woke up and told me I had severe pain in my stomach. She was shouting. It was very painful. And I was so confused what to do. So based on previous experience, I didn't call 911 because I knew they are not going to send me any help. Even those receptionists, they couldn't understand us. My wife was in pain, just shouting. She couldn't even walk. They just asked us to, uh, to sit. They couldn't understand what is the problem. Waited for more than half an hour. My wife, she was crying. It was such a tragic experience to see someone, loved one, in pain. Her eyes were full of tears. And he labeled this particular experience as a nightmare, right? A trauma. So uh, it, it was really, it was really. Uh, I, I can tell that it was really difficult for him to share uh, all these and 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 very difficult and 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 painful, right? But he saw it, um, you know, an important thing to do uh, to actually um, give uh, give the floor to to these experiences and 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 uh, hoping that they they will be communicated uh, to other. Parties, and then he said at the very uh, at the very end of the interview. And when I heard about COVID in Poland, I was so concerned because here one of my biggest concerns is being exposed to hospitals and medical centers. I was so scared. I'm still now, you know. If I'm sick, what what should I do? Um, you may also remember the case uh, of a of a uh, of a um, of an interviewee uh, who um, uh, who broke his arm while cycling, and uh, he encountered uh, he um, encountered a, 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 a doctor who uh, uh, addressed uh, him um, in Polish, um, and he he said later uh, later on something like that. I could have coped in Polish. But it is always nice when you don't have to, when you are stressed in a very difficult situation. You prefer to be able to just relax and communicate without having to sort of translate things in your head. And then I thought none of my interviewees, right, actually had this uh, experience uh, of, of having this luxury of, of you know, uh, being able to just relax and communicate without thinking whether you you uh, you you would be understood or or not. Um, another experience um, of of a person who um, uh, whose wife uh, um, had a stroke and she had to stay in hospital, but then she was left there with with without anybody, without even a telephone. Um, he said, in hospital, they told me I had to go home, but she had to stay. So my wife was in the hospital, unable to communicate with anybody, unable to, uh, to communicate with me because they would have no visitors. <clears throat> 
And within a couple of days, one of the nurses called me who spoke a little English and said, your wife is not doing well because she's angry, because she can't talk to anybody and tell them what's wrong. So I managed to set up taking them a telephone, right? So it was really painful uh, uh, for him as well, but I, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of curious why they actually didn't offer uh, this opportunity at uh, the very moment when, when uh, it, you know, they, this message was uh, communicated to, to uh, this couple that that um, uh, the, uh, the wife right had to uh, was supposed to stay. She that she needed medical help, right? <clears throat> um, and then maybe one more uh, comment, maybe not as dramatic as the previous ones, but still uh, touching upon another uh, issue. While in hospital, the actual service was good. It was very smooth and I don't think I was treated badly. I don't think I was treated well, but I wasn't treated badly. What I lacked was the communication side of things. The medical decisions were presented to me as a fait accompli. Getting information was difficult, I think. So in this case, it wasn't about the fact that uh, the, the staff didn't speak English, but th that uh, not much information was actually provided, right, uh, uh, to uh, for the person, right, to, to know what was going on. And then um, just to uh, um, uh, to finish um, uh, with some um, comments, but not so much about um, uh, the experiences, but actually um, how the, how uh, my interviewees uh, perceived the the research uh, that I was involved. The first time I got, I just got your email, you know, I was so excited, so delighted because that voucher, that money, I, I don't want that. Actually, they were, they were offered, um, uh, my interviewees were offered um, a gift card, a, 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 a voucher as a bonus for participating in my research. And he said that he doesn't want that. I just wanted to get my message across, especially that if you are inviting people from other countries, I'm working here, I pay taxes. So here you are part of the society, but at least in some places like hospitals, medical centers, where you are dealing with humans' life, we as foreigners expect them to speak English, right? So this person emphasizes the fact that he feels like being part of this community, right? But he's unable to participate uh, in this community um, fully, right? Be, because it's not possible, right? This, this, it's, it's, uh, th this is not possible, right? When, when, um, in, uh, when people, uh, you know, uh, working in a particular place, just like the, the healthcare context, uh, uh, are unable to communicate with you. And one more comment uh, from from uh, in this uh, in a similar vein. Even if there will be nothing, because I think this research, I want to thank you because it means you think about this. So this means you care and you invest your work and energy in it, right? So uh, this only you know, proves that the uh, my interviewees uh, see it as as, as as a big problem, a big issue, but uh, something that needs to be uh, reported on, needs to be. Uh, discussed and needs to be heard, right? And apparently they haven't had, um, at least so far, uh, many opportunities to actually um, uh, give the floor in a way to these experiences, uh, these stories. Okay, uh, a few words about the coping strategies that uh, they they told me that they, they resort to whenever they are unable to communicate. So um, very often they, they, they bring a spouse or someone else with them, right, if, to help them to communicate. And this was also uh, mentioned in Agnieszka Minkowska's publication. Um, uh, one of my interviewees uh, says, when I... When he, my husband, is not at home, it's hard for me to do anything related to my health. They also use Google Translate. Actually, I remember a few uh, stories when uh, uh, um, the, the speakers told me that it's really, it's it's really uh, uh, terrible that you, you need to have your, your your phone in your hand throughout the entire conversation, and and it, it, you, that that your telephone actually becomes a. a a third, uh, uh, the, the third interlocutor, right? Uh, if they can't communicate in English, uh, they also write things down. For instance, drug names to be prescribed and and deliver it to the reception. They use gestures, but they also resort to the private sector since they can actually make an appointment there online, right? So they don't have to deal with 
people um, with receptionists who don't speak um, English and who hang up on them. Okay, and finally, some suggestions for improvement that they uh, that they offer, right, on the basis of, of their own experiences. Uh, almost everybody mentions some kind of a roadmap for incoming visitors, where to go, what to do, healthcare-wise, not only in case of an emergency, and in English, and in English. Uh, one of them actually um, um, presented it, it in a, a in a in an academic fashion. Orientation is a fail. For foreigners, I think it's unethical. You could challenge it. It's almost illegal. If healthcare is a guarantee, communicating healthcare must be a guarantee as well. It, it, it is a burden. I understand that, but it's an inherited burden. They must make the orientation clear outside of the Polish language for those who need it. They also mention an available info line. Um, I think there is something uh, like that, but um, um, many of my interviewees mentioned that that is not always available. Then uh, they also want the frontline staff to be able to use at least conversational English, and it's that it's not much, it doesn't take much, and um, uh, multilingual documentation being available. That's another issue that they struggle with. One of my interviewees um, who, with whom I actually shared um, um, some, uh, some um, uh, facts from, uh, from a conversation that I had had um, uh, with the head of one of the hospitals in Poznan, uh, that was a conversation about the technicalities of, 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 of what happens when a foreigner comes to uh, this particular hospital. <clears throat> And I remember I was told that they always count on the fact that things would work out, right? So they, that there will be a doctor speaking a particular language, that there will be someone who would, uh, who, who would be able to help. And the reaction of that interviewee yeah, uh, was things do not work out. They should count on, count on the fact that they are not going to work out and work from that as a basis for improving. Okay, so just to conclude, a few very short, um, short conclusions because I think that the stories um, have already, um, in a way, told us everything. Um, Poznań is seen as a city open to incoming visitors, and many interviewees emphasize that they love Poznań and the people here. It's just this particular aspect that is really problematic, and. Even when they say that they overall are satisfied with the care they receive here, they admit that it is so because they rely on somebody else's help. Okay, so I think that will be all for me. So, so thank you very much for your attention. I would also like to thank the organizers for uh, allowing me to be part of this great event and to uh, uh, to to uh, uh, to give the floor to these voices, um, to these stories that these stories are actually have been heard, uh, and I hope that um, that we will be able to do something um, about that in the nearest uh, future. Um, so thank you very much once again. And if you have any questions or doubts regarding my uh, research, please uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, uh, and, and here is my uh, email address. So thank you very much.